Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at another new aircraft coming very soon, imminently in fact, a Microsoft Flight Simulator from Pilots, the Dash 7. We're here at Bella Coola in Canada, not too far from Air Tindy's actual base at uh, Yellowknife, um, about 30 minutes further up north. And we're going to be taking it for a little test flight around the valley to see what this new product has to offer. I'll be sharing my thoughts with you as we fly along and uh, I want to hear yours too so share them down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe as well. First off then it's got a uh, quite a nice animated cabin with the rear loading door uh, and the cabin section here as well with cabin lighting. It makes it very easy to set up your own custom views on the aircraft because you can just walk out through the flight deck into the back of the cabin and set the views that you want to set. Flight deck door is animated though no sounds and uh, from what I can see as well as we enter a very complex um, busy flight deck environment there are no animated windows in here either. But first impressions really nice texture work uh, around the flight deck. Lots of circuit breakers on the overhead, none of which uh, are pullable, poppable. And the overhead panel has loads of switches but should be easy enough to learn. Certainly, certainly if you fly the DC-6 frequently, uh, perhaps the Fokker F-28, that kind of era of aircraft, then you might find yourself nicely at home here. There are different variants depending on what you have. So I've got the fantastic Payware TDS GTN XI. And uh, I've gone for the liveries with those installed today. If you don't, you've could, you could either choose the GNS 530 from Working Title, which has uh, functionality here, or you just go for a default base uh, analog variant aircraft. Lots of different liveries to choose from, this one being one of them. And the reason why we're using Air Tindy is because they've helped pilots create this product by um, allowing them access to recording sounds and that kind of thing as well. So uh, a little nod to them to say thank you from the Microsoft Flight Simulator community. Currently with this build that I've got for the preview there aren't any checklists uh, so I don't know how to fly this uh, but I will be offering my thoughts as we go and uh, you'll have to excuse any glaring errors um, as well. But having a little look at the overhead I can see that we've got DC controls on the left, AC on the right hand side, big yellow box there drawing my attention to the battery AC gens. Below that engine bleeds. Uh, in the middle engine and pump switches so fuel and engines in the middle there and then the pressurization in the lower middle section followed by icing. So actually when you split it up into sections like that it makes it quite easy to learn. And then right above, you'll have to crack your neck, uh, you've got the cabin lighting up here as well, like so. So, in lieu of a checklist, uh, we're going to go battery on. Ooh, that's very nice. Look at those lights. Wow, the emissives are spectacular. Really nice. And uh, we're going to get the beacon on, so I'm going to pop anti-collision lights to red. That's illuminated the very faint looking anti-collision light on the tail there. And we can work through engine start. So we'll rotate the drone camera around to our prime view. Engines 1 and then 2, then 3, then 4. Let's get us started. So, engine mode selector to 1. We've got to make sure actually as well pumps 1, 2, 3 and 4 are all online, the ignition modes are all normal engine start
really cool sounds. So I'm going to put those into normal flow, all of those four fuel control lever switches and uh, we can also arm our TDS GTNXI and get all that working. We can uh, sort the map out and zoom out accordingly. We're going to be taking Pause. off. System test okay. Depending on the windsock, uh, which is there, so it's flat actually. So we're going to depart southbound down the valley and have a little mooch about. Mainly manual flight, but we'll tinker with the autopilot and see what we get as well. So we'll make sure we've set the correct Q&H. Um, because of the conditions in the real world at the moment around here, I've gone for a bit more of a nicer, greener, summery kind of weather. The Q&H is flat at 1013. Put generator 1 on. Turn engine start off for uh, ignition. Engine 2 start. I don't really know too much about the Dash 7, but it seems to me that it's a larger Twin Otter with four engines, meaning that I would imagine it's vastly overpowered. Um, <laughs> but I'm not sure. We'll have a look. Engine 3 start. Got to pop AC and DC gen on the master control on there. So I've just quickly popped those on. And inside we'll look at the engine start animations and the uh, gauges there as well. I've set flaps to flap 15 already. Uh, it's worth noticing as well actually on the glare shield here, lots of options for autopilot, uh, but it looks like it's at more of a gyro pilot system, uh, similar to the DC-6, so with descent, climb, pitch, turn pitch, um, all that kind of stuff. So we'll experiment when we're airborne to understand that feature a little bit more, because I'm not certain if it's a proper autopilot or if it's a gyro pilot, but we will find out. sort the transponder out while that's all happening. And I've already engaged flap 15. I've reverted that back to flap 0 so we can watch the animations all the way through to full flap. So let's have a little look at those. Quite nice. So we'll set flat 15 for our departure uh, and then we'll continue with our setup. So Gen 4 goes online, engine start off. Make sure the emergency lights, no smoking lights, staff has to see about signs are off. Uh, we're switched on. I will put the emergency lights on because I want to see if they're reflected in the cabin environment. And they are. There's the seatbelt signs, there's the emergency exit lighting all illuminated. Strange emissives, uh, very angular. Pop those off. We're in taxi mode, so at the minute we've got roll, uh, inboard and outboard and ground spoilers all up on the wings, as you can see. We'll do some control system checks as well. So right and left elevators. 
and rudder. So looking left and right, we've got our taxi lights on, park brakes off and we're going to taxi to the runway. Beautiful surroundings here actually. Uh, we are in idle, but already actually it's um, it looks like it wants to accelerate rather quickly. So I'm using, or dabbing the brakes on and off quite regularly actually, just to try and keep the speed down. In fact, in a straight line, I feel like I'm holding the brakes ever so slightly on just to maintain uh, a, a suitable speed. Nice to see the nose light following uh, the nose wheel on the ground. So we're just going to hold position here at the hold point. Part brakes on, we're going to go flight mode. That retracts the spoilers that we saw popping out of the wing a moment ago. We're going to pop the strobe lights on we're going to make sure the engine bleeds are on as well. We want to make sure if we're going into an area where we are actually going to pressurise the cabin and uh, we want to make sure that the cabin altitude is set for our cruise correctly at that point. And then consider things like icing systems as well. Store warning heat, elevator heaters on. landing lights on and we'll pop back outside just to have a look at those emissives for this uh, really nice early morning flight here at Bella Coola. Great emissives actually, you can see the light reflecting off the signage as well which is quite nice to see. So I've pushed the prop RPM now to max RPM for takeoff. Elevator trim there indicates it's set to take off. Can't see any other options here. What I have found though is now at max RPM it really wants to go. I've tried a, a takeoff with normal flow RPM uh, and it just didn't want to get the speed up. So we'll try again. Brakes helped. Nice pitch change of noise there. Hold the brakes a little moment while I set power. Prop auto feathers arms, brakes off. Take off thrust. Take off power. Speed's alive. Here we go, accelerating really nicely now. 80 knots. Hundred knots. and rotating away from the airfield. Terrain ahead, terrain ahead, terrain ahead, pull up, terrain ahead, terrain ahead, pull up, terrain ahead, pull up. That's the PMS GTN XI. Terrain ahead. I'm going to allow it to just climb out a little bit more, terrain just ahead. setting a little bit Pull of up. nicer trim here terrain for the climb. Ahead. There Pull we are. Up. And then I'm going to jump outside, ahead. Pull up. gear up, ahead. to look Pull at the up. animations. Terrain ahead. Pull up. Terrain ahead. Pull up. Terrain ahead. Really nice. Pull up. Terrain ahead. Pull up. Flaps up. Terrain ahead. Pull up. We can inhibit the train alerts warning system. And uh, bring the throttle back a little bit. We don't need takeoff power now. Uh, quite nice and easy to trim, actually. I'll probably look at just putting the nose forwards a little bit more. Just to allow us to accelerate. Because we're still nose up 5 degrees or so at the moment and it's climbing quite nicely. I can't find an autopilot master switch anywhere. Um, there it is. Autopilot and your damper mode engaged. So I'm going to press altitude just to level off capture where we're at for now as we begin to accelerate. And I think then we can also bring our prop RPM 
down to normal flow. It'd be best if you had a keybind set to this just to make sure that it's a bit smoother in transition. Because we've got the autopilot engaged, we need to set heading modes. Like so, and it will command that directional change. Beautiful views of the lake. Winds are calm, so we could, in theory, turn around and land on the opposite direction uh, runway from what we've just departed if we want to. We're not flying on any networks or anything, and winds are, are zero knots for us today. So autopilot seems fairly self-explanatory. If we had um, a flight plan route here, we'd make sure that we've got GPS selected and we would then select nav. Uh, we can fly approaches, back courses, it can hold vertical speed modes, or our airspeed that we select as well. And then we can settle into cruising around Canada quite nicely, or wherever else in the world that you want to explore. The British Antarctic Survey, for those of you who like to wander around the realms of Antarctica uh, there is a livery for that included in this too. So we're level at 2200 what I'm going to do is just head into this little area here and uh, as stunning as it is we'll, we'll turn the autopilot off and I'll just hand fly around the, the valley a little bit just to get a feel for what it's like in uh, manual flight. The model and the sounds are really nice aren't they? I found the ground acceleration a, a bit too keen. Perhaps it, it's like that in real life, I wouldn't know. Um, that's something you do need to bear in mind as uh, you're going to be using the brakes a lot I think. Very cool looking aircraft though isn't it? Incredibly unique and uh, vastly overpowered I'm sure as well for what it needs. Let's have a little look. I'm going to look down. Unfortunately, by the way, as a side note as we look down here, certainly if you like to fly on Batsim or you like to fly NDBs and that kind of thing, it's all obstructed by this really annoying armrest which you can't move. It's fixed in place, which is really frustrating. Let's disengage the autopilot but leave the yaw damper on. And I'm just going to activate my Toby eye tracker so that we can have a little look around. Very smooth actually in manual flight. Easy to trim as we mentioned on the climb out as well. Go to 30 degrees angular bank. Holding about 2,300. So very much the same for a right turn as well actually very smooth and easy to control. So let's see how she handles a manual approach. So Bella Cooler was back down the river on the right hand side and uh, we'll hand fly it in. Absolutely no idea what to expect. Again uh, there's no checklist or anything with this uh, and I haven't found a, a first look kind of guide to help me navigate the complexities of a new and uh, fairly old school era aircraft but we will give it a go nevertheless. One would assume I want more prop RPM. So that it's in the green zone. I'm just going to allow us to descend slowly. It's going to reduce our torque setting. Uh, and I can already feel we're having to push forwards on the stick a fair bit just to maintain a smooth descent, gentle descent. So I'm having to retrim actually a little bit here. 
This aircraft does have the ability to um, put the propellers into a reverse pitch, so from flight idle that we're pretty much in at the moment, we'd be able to disconnect and then move into a max reverse. We should hear a big old sound change with that too, he says. The, the great thing about aircraft like these, um, and there are a fair few of them now coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator, is that it gets you exploring regions of the world that you might not otherwise have even bothered with. Uh, Bella Coola is not an airport I've been to before, but because of the preview of this DHC-7 or the Dash-7, uh, I wanted to go somewhere A different, B near to where this is based. Yellowknife's a paywear airport scenery with particularly poor reviews, so that's why I've not gone there specifically. Um, And I wanted to have a real good look. Need to get that part brake back off again. Bit of an issue with the key binds there being a bit too close to the navigation screens and the touch screens of that. And uh, we just continue until we see the runway. I want to say the emissives inside here are really, really impressive. turn them all on to maximum and that's what they look like. So the runway's just round the corner here I think. Um, flaps 15 at 150 knots. So I'm in flight idle actually and just descending nice and slowly. And I think we'll be at a reasonable speed to get the gear down to. So this time I'm going to drop to a wing view. Perhaps that one, so we can see the wings, uh, the uh, the landing gear come out of the wings. Flaps 25. Following the river, I know it's here somewhere. Bella Coola. Unmarked, difficult to locate, no VORs at the airfield either, uh, making it particularly tough. But actually, we're on runway heading pretty much, so we just about got away with that, I think. <laughs> Beautiful scenery, eh? Make sure you share your thoughts about this aircraft in the comments below. I'm very keen to hear what you think of this new Pilots Dash 7 coming very soon to Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's quite a unique aircraft, it's a little tricky. Um, to get used to without a checklist but I'm hoping there'll be a checklist or a user guide with the release which will make it a bit easier for people to kind of get used to and, and learn the aircraft um, certainly with a guide would be really really quite good so you'll have to forgive any glaring mistakes that I may have made if you're a seasoned Dash 7 Pro this looks good Good. Looking ahead. I'm just going to hold her off the ground. Touch down. Gently on the brakes. And we'll use a little bit of reverse prop. Which helps it stop on a sixpence. Wow! Mighty impressive. 230 foot per minute there, actually. It's, uh, nicely on the center line, just above the touchdown zone, according to the Flow Pro landing rate widget. From the outside, then, a little replay of our touchdown. Gears down, flaps extended. So I'm sure you agree the exterior model is really quite nice, isn't it? It's, it's exquisite. a little bit of a wing view as we 
welcome it to our final descent. The aircraft in itself has been in development for just over, uh, well, almost two years in fact actually now. And what's really cool is the fact that this aircraft can actually take off with only 500 metres of runway. It's a, it's a, short takeoff and landing aircraft certainly as you can see with the super quick deceleration there that uh, it can stop on the sixpence unfortunately no pricing has been released yet so I have absolutely no idea how much is this going to cost um, but hopefully not too much given its niche corner of the market it's a very specific aircraft for a very specific type of simming isn't it So you'll just have to keep an eye out on the pilot's website uh, nearer the time. It's, release is expected this weekend, so you'll have to keep your eye out for that. As I set the parking brakes here. But there you have it. A short preview of the soon-to-release Pilots Dash 7 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. As we mentioned, it's an incredibly niche aircraft a small corner of the flight simulation market I suppose no price anticipated or expected or announced just yet so we'll just have to wait and see upon release and for that you want to monitor the pilots.shop website I hope you've enjoyed this preview share your thoughts tips tricks in the comments below and I hope to see you join me for a live stream very soon in the meantime as always hit like and subscribe thanks for watching and I'll see you soon take care